Hello and welcome back to episode 11 of the Two Brits, One Yang podcast. And I have to say, I'm absolutely buzzing. We have a, a major special guest here, Joan Luque, all the way from Spain. He told, you to say, he told you to say Luque, bro. Just, told you to say Luque. You say <laughs> he did just tell me to say Luque, didn't he? But you know what? It's our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Luke, jo hey, and Maystone's number 11 for the 11th episode of the Two Brits, One Yang podcast. Oh, yeah, That's great time. People have been asking great for him time. as well. And he's listened, he's turned up, so I'm looking forward to this We've one. We've been hammering him for weeks, trying to get Thanks. him on, trying to get him on. Thanks. Busy man. Hey. Very busy man. <laughs> hey, in the, the playoff, the playoff, playoff final. final. That playoff the push, it doesn't mess around. Hey, two playoff finals for Luke, Worthing and Totten. Double promotion. Yeah. Double promotion. <laughs> two two, two medals, yeah. Medals. So so that's right, it? How does that work? You'll be in League 2 then if, if you do that. They give you an extra. <laughs> <laughs> they just say, ah, oh, you got the bonus. Here's League 2 money. Nah, nah. I hope so. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, I have to say, I think this will be, I'm hoping our best Sorry. episode yet. Yeah, very well spoken. And, and I, I was never in the same changing room as you, but I feel like I know you. You're such a big personality, always mentioned around, uh, around Maidstone, even, uh, you know. For the right reasons. Yeah, exactly. Even a, a whole year later. So mm -hmm. People yeah. always reminisce back to that year as well. Well, obviously, we'll, we'll get into it and we'll talk about it. But that goal scoring year, obviously, National League South playoff. Um, player of the season, mm -hmm. everyone always goes back to Luque, Luque at the Gallagher. Oh, sometimes Luque could just have that bit of magic. And we've seen, we actually put a little picture of it, the little shrine you now have underneath the, the Genko. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, such yeah, a cool yeah. little... I, see, I saw it the other day for the first time. Oh, really? Yeah, I, saw yeah, it yeah, when I, came on the... I remember I, s I sent you the, the message when I first saw it. Yeah, you said, oh, it was sick, down. man. I'm, we're not on there, are we? No, no, no. Oh, no I'm, I'm not on there at all. No, nah, never mind. At all, not one picture. Never mind. That's why it was easy to release us, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, what was it, a 20 goal season and a title? Yeah, 22. I know you know damn well how many 22. goals. <laughs> yeah, 22. okay, 22. 22. Wow. Yeah. How many assists? He doesn't, eight, he doesn't pass I the think. ball, brother. If it's eight? eight? Yeah, it was 30 goals. Cold so stats. Like, involved in it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Play, it's more the title, obviously. Like, yeah, it's, it's obviously about winning something, not mm -hmm. personally, but as a team mm -hmm. and he was sick man he was just the 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 look you play the mason like you know how people he's with the players and like you feel such an important player yeah just of playing at mason and i haven't felt that that feeling anywhere else and obviously if you do well like you've been doing in the fa cup this season mm -hmm. you must have feel the same oh yeah and that's why you definitely sense it didn't yeah the atmosphere yeah. and, and then stuff when I, they come personally to that made me feel like i'm the best yeah like, i'm gonna be the best and i'm i, I just I don't know, I performed at levels I'd never performed, really. Mm -hmm. Do you I, feel like that gave you confidence as yeah. well? Like, every game you're just, you're going into it, feeling unstoppable? Yeah, 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 definitely. It's like, they will push you. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel they're pushing you through the game, like, mm -hmm. as well. And I think we mentioned uh, yesterday, well, we feel filming this pod the day after the 10th episode, mm -hmm. and we're talking, so obviously we got released yesterday. Yeah. Um, we're talking about how much we're going to miss the fans, because they just have that ability. Oh. Just, uh, they're, they're like no other fan base that I've personally ever played for. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you play in Ireland and stuff, and we've got big fans mm -hmm. as well. But there's something about the Maidstone fans down the Gallagher that, like you said, they just spur you on, and there's, yeah. there's something you can't even explain. It's intangible, mm -hmm. but it's yeah, it's they're unbelievable. Places on fire when you're winning. Do you know what I mean, yeah. And I have to say, they absolutely loved you. I remember it. I always would ask the the young fans when you meet them, "Oh, what's your score prediction for today?" We played Worthing. It was the only time <laughs> people were saying we're gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> they're like. 3-2, Luke yeah. Hattrick. I was like, excuse me? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the other day, they were asking me, like, uh, when I came and watched, they were like, oh, you're playing on Sunday, uh, on Monday? Or, yeah, was it? No, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday. 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 Like, please tell me you're not playing Sunday, please. Like, I'm like, no, I'm alone. No, I'm alone. <laughs> oh, bless them, man. But they were asking yeah. for you as well. Like, we go live on, on uh, TikTok. I went there. They were mm -hmm. all saying, get Luke on. Wasn't it when we had Sam Corn there? We went live. It was like, guess the guest. Like, is it Luke? We showed Corny tattoos. They went, it's definitely Luke. Corny's sunbed's obviously working. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> He's got that little Mediterranean glow to him, huh? Uh, mm -hmm. He's there really just from Shafi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, the sun must be different hut. across that border, on the aisle. <laughs> hey, I know all about Tan, huh? I know all about Tan, huh? But come here, so with the guests, we always start with the same question. And it's basically your first, your first footballing memory. Like what was it that got you into football from a young age? Oh, that's a good one, man. I should have studied this. <laughs> yeah, I've done um, my studying. Well, 
Do you play football, you mean? What's yeah, your just first footballing memory? Your like, when yeah. you think of, oh, I started football here for this reason, or maybe my first memory for, is down the, down the park with my dad. For example, like, I remember signing for my first ever team and turning up and just playing the match. That's my example. So, like, what would yours be? Like, did your dad ever take you to your yeah, first no, game? Yeah, just, no, I just remember playing for my town. Nice. Like, for my town in Barcelona and just... I remember playing with my friends and mm -hmm. scoring goals and, like, I don't know. It was, mm -hmm. it was fun. I was a centre-back, by the way. No really? way. When I was young. Really? really? Mad. Yeah, people don't believe it, but I was a centre-back and I was just doing one-twos with everyone. Bang, 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 bang. And scoring, like, sort of, like 60 <laughs> goals in a season being centre-back. <laughs> in, 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 in the 11th side, right? Because it must um, be said that you're you're from Barcelona, but you're actually a Madrid fan. Yes. Damn. How did how did that actually come about? Just I don't know. Like I want to be against my friends. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's just obviously my dad supports Madrid. My my grandpa uh, supported Madrid as well. But it's not just because of them. It's just the way that I don't know. They made me feel something that mm. no one else does really. Mm -hmm. And it, it come from obviously when you're a child, your your parents sort of introduce you to of to a team. But when you're old. If you don't feel anything, you probably change. Mm -hmm. But I put a video the other day in the semi final or no, the quarter final against City. Like, that's how I feel. Like, when I'm watching it again, I'm oh, so tense. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. You're really like, passionate, isn't yeah, you? Yeah, like, that's, really good that, that, that I just get well. mad. In fact, you commented to someone on the Instagram, is your best moment of your career it was like, <laughs> not of your career, best moment of football. It was like something like winning the league yeah. and Rudiger scoring the goal or something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the game. I think it was like the day before or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. But I um, just can't get my head around that. A Madrid fan in Barcelona, no one that you come to England, they kicked you out or something. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, well, all my friends, um, including Evie that's here, um, they're all um, Barca fans. And only one is, so we're in a group of 10, only two, me and another, I'm a Madrid fan, really? and all my family is all Barca. Really, like yeah. only like probably one of my uncles and one of my cousins out of I don't know thirty people. Mm -hmm. So it's Let's not common, heated. but yeah, yeah, it's like it gets heated Why in the group chat. They play each other. Do you go and watch the games together? Oh, well, I suppose you can't. Yeah, I can't really. Yeah. But obviously, because I'm going, I'm going home Wednesday. We watch the semi final together, which is nice. nice. My dad really misses it. Yeah. Um, like watching football together and obviously watching me as well. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be hoping that Madrid get to the get to the oh, final of the Champions oh. League, obviously on Wembley. Hey, brothers looking for tickets if they do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone Nacho, Nacho, Nacho Gonzalez. Nacho. Nacho, if you're watching this, <laughs> Nacho, mate, Nacho, Nacho, I beg you. Awesome. He said, he Madrid said, gets to the final next day. I'm we had the beep so much, the first guest to starts swearing. Oh my so God. I, I swear a lot here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I always swear. <laughs> my first two words in English were. So, I'm sorry. Beep. So you guys get out of there. I promise. Oh, that was my two words, and I kept saying it every game. Like, I'll miss a chance. Oh, that really? beep. <laughs> really, yeah. Yeah, it was funny, uh, man. So uh, take us to the next part. Obviously, your first memory playing playing centre half. Yeah. Then when did it kind of get into more organised football where you were starting to get more get serious? Up? Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, when I was, as I said, in my town team, um, and obviously one day my dad just grabbed me and said, "Look." Like you're doing well, you you're like you're being scouted by this, 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 and it was like Barca, Spain, like all the top academies mm -hmm. in Barcelona. And I was like, you got the pick. And obviously, as a child, I was like, well, the biggest is Barca. I probably don't regret it. Obviously, it was a, such a good experience, but I should have probably gone Espanol, which is the second. Mm -hmm. But I probably had more chance there mm -hmm. to make it further. That Barca, Barca is like you have to be the top, top, top. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I lasted. Two years and then the third one I got a loan and after the, the loan they were like... No, so what age was you when you was at Barca then? It wasn't from Youth was Academy like, or was mm, it... It was like 10th to 13th or something like that. And you went on loan? Uh, yeah. At yeah, 13. they loan you so wow. to see That's your... That's interesting that is. See your development. Development, yeah. Development. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you doing well or they think that you're ready to be next year then they just bring you back. That's what But the interesting thing there, is that though. I went on, on trial because obviously my town is not... Like it's, it's, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know any town here that could be, but the levels are very different. Mine will be, I don't know, in the last division or one before the last one. Mm -hmm. And obviously Barca are in the top, top one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously they were a bit scared and they made me do a trial with a year older. Really? So like, I don't know, there's so many players that made it from like Bartra, Montoya, I don't know, so many, so many players mm -hmm. there that made it to the top. And I had to train with them to prove that I was good enough to be in year, one level, you know, the year below. I suppose it makes sense though, because there's so many, so many kids at these academies, like Chelsea, for example, they're mm. scholars. But it's literally, if you perform bad, next one in. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it sort of makes sense it's that they have like a loan system where they can actually <laughs> say to you, right, you go and play for this team. We'll see how you get on. Yeah. If you do well, come back. If you well, struggle, like the maybe system, we have really. to let you yeah. go. But there are a bunch of feeder clubs around as well. I mean, even Jordi Alba got released. Like, it's so yeah, he got released to Cornea. Yeah, yeah he went to Cornea and then they ended up getting him back. It's... It's Damn, so bro really has done his uh, Bruce, study. Bruce said, yeah. And he went, Cornea. <laughs> Cornea. Cornea. <laughs> Cornea. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, there's obviously top academies where they just loan you there, which obviously if one, I went to one of them, and they just keep track on you, and it's easy for them because you play against them and play in, in the top level still, but you probably get more minutes than if you stay there because they will sign someone from another part of Spain, which mm-hmm. is unbelievable, and mm-hmm. you will not play, and... So what was the what was the next steps after after Barca? Yeah, just like top academies, but not Barca or Espanol, mm-hmm. but obviously always playing in the top level mm-hmm. of my age, mm-hmm. um, and then to till I got um, to the first team of one of them, which was like it's obviously not compar- like comparable with mm-hmm. England, but it was like League Two in here, so it's like the fourth division, mm-hmm. um, and I was in the B team. I started in the B team, which is. In the it was like in national league, so one below, and halfway through the season because of injuries, I got there, started really well, four games, five goals, I think it was, and then they sought manager, and the new manager didn't trust me, and I was like, oh, kill and, me. And <laughs> were you playing as a as a winger now, or what position were you playing? Yeah, in I was the first playing. Do you think I was right winger? I think. Really? Right, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like it, but I was <laughs> right winger, I was striker at some point, um, then number ten, and then I kept moving to the left. Mm-hmm. And then obviously from, I would say, a couple of years after, I was just left winger. Left winger. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of do want to bring it back to Barca days because I don't know how many times we're going to get La Masia products on our That's pod. True. Yeah. What was, how special was it to play there? Because obviously it's such like a factory for talent. Could you just tell right away, like, that boy will go to play for Spain one day, like Montoya, Mark Bartra. Could you just see the players right away that were going to make it? Or were there a ton as well that you thought were going to make it that didn't? Yeah, well, obviously, it's not only in your team, people that you think is going to make it. Obviously, there's people in your team that stand out every game and in every tournament, and they're, they're very well looked after as well by coaches and every one of the clubs. So you course. think, you say, okay, this guy is going to, he's potentially going to make it. Mm-hmm. But it's also, like, when you go into a game and you're one hour or hour and a half before the game for, like, the, the meeting time obviously you're there and you're watching people play and sometimes it was like Sesk and this and that and it's like mate I'm playing I'm watching Bojan play and before I'm, I'm playing you know what I mean like mm-hmm. he's scoring like hat-tricks every game he's just sick and obviously so it's not just who you train with but all the people you see training mm-hmm. yeah you know so and obviously training it was amazing just like, Did you play with any like big players? I know you just mentioned Bojan there, but it was like yeah, no, I played Mark Bartra. Is that you? He's a massive yeah, player. He, you, yeah, yeah I didn't above. play with him, wow. but he, he, he I, I did my trial with him. Obviously, he's very good friend. He is very good friend with uh, Ruben Alcaraz, which is now at Cadiz. Right, he's a midfield. I played with him. Oh, he's from the next town, so we was always in the taxi because they have a taxi which picks you up from home, takes you to training, and wow. takes you back. And obviously, he's, he's such a good friend. Um, and then I played with him in senior football after he's made it to the top. But he took a while to make it. So like he went through all the, um, um, the levels, the levels mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and then there's obviously people like Muniesa, which is mm-hmm. played at Stoke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, he made his debut. He was in the Champions League final in the squad when they won it. Wow. He was mad. Um, was there anybody in your team that you thought, oh, he's going to make it? And he actually hasn't, or anyone in the academy you thought this player is unbelievable. Everyone's raving about him. Yeah, and he's for never example, got to this for example level. when I remember when, you know this tournament that is in TV. Well, I don't know if you know it. Well, there's a tournament in TV where all the Spanish teams play. If you play in La Liga, so all the, the, the La Liga promises. Is it yeah, like, yeah, that yeah, one. It's the small side. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, called yeah. Brunete before. Okay. And I, I was there when I was obviously I didn't I, I was not in the squad, but they made us all trouble because mm-hmm. it was only I don't know fourteen people in the squad and we was. 11 aside, so it was 20 people, 22 people. Mm. Um, and I remember I wasn't in the squad and they signed someone just for that tournament, just before that tournament, and he made it, obviously, into the squad. They signed him, he was from from another town, not even in Mathurin, he was from another side of Spain. They they brought his family here, um, car, dock, house, work, everything. It's mental. So, and obviously the wage would have been amazing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and he's never really made it to the top. 
to the top that? top I don't know he's played in good levels but mm. not to the top top like if someone like that should have yeah. probably made it so were they actually paying some of the lads that were at Barcelona <clears throat> they were giving them away or just giving their family yeah no like... for example to me I remember they were helping my family with my studies so they pay your studies okay wow that's really good. I, I remember... And obviously... Sorry. No, no, no. It's, um, it's, your, it's your podcast. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> and obviously, the, the, it depends on that, that guy, house, work, obviously, because if other people will get... La Masia, for example, what you were saying, I didn't get to be in La Masia because I'm from Barcelona. So with the cap, they, they ah, pick you up. Okay. So La Masia is for people that live, I don't know, two hours away. And then they ask your family, you want a cap to take them every training or you'd rather them be in here studying and we look after them. Why or not? from another part of Spain, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like Javi Simmons. Yeah. There, for example. Yeah. But I remember watching, it's funny you say that about them paying for your school. I remember watching a, there's a big news thing in the US called 60 Minutes and they did a piece on Cesc Fabregas. And they're basically, he was basically saying how important like the whole human is at Barcelona. Like they, if you weren't doing well in school, they wouldn't play. It doesn't matter if you're yeah. the best player on the team. And I think that's quite rare in academy football. I mean, all, I haven't played academy here, but... The stories I hear over here, it's like, if you're good at 12, 13, it's like, oh, you, don't, you don't really need school. And I think that's like really unique that Barca does something like that. And it, it clearly works because they produced a whole national team, basically. Yeah, yeah. no, no, it, it, it should be that way, isn't it? No, of course, a different culture. And it's like how it is yeah. in America. If you're not making your GPA, then you're not playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But did you get to see that famous, uh, that famous team? I don't know what year they're born, but Messi's year, PK... Fabregas, Messi. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I used to play, so I used to play B after Bojan and uh, there was a guy in midfield, uh, Guy Asolin. I don't know if you know him. No, I don't know. Um, there was a couple very good ones that have made it to La Liga or like top division, but Oriel haven't Romero? stand out in there. Romero, yeah. yeah, was Romero <laughs> yes, there? Probably, probably. Yeah. Obviously, I don't remember all of them, but obviously um, Bojan is the one that I, was, I remember just watching and saying, like, these guys just, and he Take probably, <laughs> he, do you reckon he actually made Japan. it to the level that he, he could have? Like, I mean, he was obviously right, meant to end up stoked and stuff. X amount of no, but he was boss, meant so. to be like the next, they were oh, yeah, running the next, next message. Yeah. I, think, like, yeah. I think he had like, maybe like 10 goals at like 17 in La Liga, like something crazy yeah. like that. And yeah, he didn't hit the heights he was expected to, but at the end of the day when he retired, so I played for nah, Barca, Ajax, Roma, AC Milan, yeah, but, played in the Prem. Yeah, you also have to think, he got to the Barca like team it's when he was Messi, mm -hmm. Eto, mm -hmm. Ronaldinho, yeah, like all the players there. Like, how are you gonna be on to, like on top of him yeah. being a youngster? Yeah, of yeah. you know what I mean. And that's what makes Messi so incredible. At sixteen, they're like, mm -hmm. here you go, and yeah. that team was that team was unbelievable. I mean, we all I think a lot of people that are our age don't realize Xavi and Iniesta struggled for minutes until they're like mid twenties at mm -hmm. Barca. Like it was so competitive, mm -hmm. and. Just for a 16-year-old to waltz in and then be like, yep, yeah, here's the reins. We'll get rid of Ronaldinho in his prime just for you. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. wow, he it's must have been doing it. Yeah. But it, it is crazy as well. Um, the, he, you don't even remember if you saw Oriol Romeo. That's how many good players were at that yeah, academy. No, no, exactly. <laughs> it's a joke. Affleck was there, wasn't he, as well? Yeah, yeah he was probably, yeah. probably been. Probably. He was the I same love Affleck as well. Yeah. 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 He's a Stoke he City was, boy as well. Yeah, they, they no, just signed all the parts of Rejects. Yeah, it's Dutch. Yeah, I don't want to call them Barca rejects, but they signed all the big players, yeah. you know, academy players. Who they have is Shakiri for mm -hmm. years, Arnautovic, like just big, big players that were just living up in Stoke. Yeah. <laughs> That's but crazy. They, I swear they did something with their training ground, which attracted so many players. Is that and what it made, was? Yeah, like I remember <sighs> seeing it, like proper turned it into like five star facilities. But the funny thing is, they went from such a like a Route One throw ins team, yeah. and all of a sudden they were just getting all these Barca boys in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like, how but I just wanted you... to prove that they could do it on a yeah. wet, what is it? And a wet, wet, windy night in Stoke. Tuesday something. night. Yeah, Call, Tuesday, Call night. Tuesday night in Stoke. <laughs> sorry, yeah. that's sorry. Oh. So yeah, so bringing it back, that uh, that one coach that came in and, and didn't trust you, that must have been quite difficult to take now. Yeah, obviously I was doing well and he was like, oh, you're young, you need to learn, like, and just stop playing me. I was like, what's the point? Like, I've, I've been... I played four games, caught five goals. I've been important. Everyone thinks I should be starting like I I was doing. Um, and obviously the guy came back, the one that was playing, and we ended that that season. We we got safe from relegation in the last game. I remember we won one nil. It was like first season in, in senior football, and it was like, mate, this is tough. 
Mm-hmm. And obviously from there, I went to different, like four different clubs in two years. Because I went to a club, half season, same thing. Like you, literally, in Spain, it was different. Like when you're young, you, you're like 250 a month. Mm-hmm. And obviously some places are a bit far. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're not playing, I wasn't in Germany. I'm like, just change, go somewhere mm-hmm. else. Still not playing, change somewhere else, same. And then obviously I decided to to move somewhere else because in Barcelona there's so many people and uh, there's so many, oh, I'm friend with this and friend with that. Inevitable. And then mm-hmm. it's like, what's, how am I going to play ahead of someone that you're friend with? Like, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's never going to work. Mm-hmm. So and I at decided, this stage, did you have uh, another job? Was it full-time football or did you have another I, job? I worked as a, uh, in, in, you know Mango, the brand, brand clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clothes brand. Um, I was just there, so dependent like no way. Yeah, he came yeah. to the show. No like, retail oh, assistant. Oh, did, did you jump on? <laughs> <laughs> you got the discount. Yeah. Hola, um, hola, hola. Yeah. Um, I went there and I remember I was in in Sabadell, which is quite a big club. In I was in the B team as well, mm-hmm. and I got called a couple of times to to work like to train with the first team, and they were like, "Oh, you can't leave work today." I'm like, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go sick," mm-hmm. and I just called sick a couple of times, and then just straight yeah. after that, um, summer came. And obviously, I had to make a decision in August because someone that played with me the first year in my senior club, he was like, look, I played in Ibiza time ago and they want a winger and I spoke highly about you and they want you. I'm like, oh. And obviously, I spoke at home. I was like, look, my contract was finishing with Mango. So I was like, I'm not going to have work here. I, I just gonna, I'm just going to risk it, you mm-hmm. know? Like, obviously, sounds good at Ibiza. Like, mm-hmm. People would think, oh, I went there and took the piece. I did it, but... Um, I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I went there and... What league, what league were they at the time? It was like League Two. So fourth, 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 fourth division. Tier. They're doing quite well now, though. I swear yeah. they're yeah. Yeah. It's, not, they're it's in... not the Ibiza, though. Like, uh, it's not the one that's now okay, okay. in the second. Okay. It's so many teams in Ibiza. People only think... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, so what's the one now? Like CD, Ibiza? Ibiza. Yeah, yeah, CD, Ibiza. Ibiza. UD, no, that, no. It's UD, Ibiza. That's the one in Segunda. Okay. And then the CD, Ibiza. So many. So many. Um, but hey, the, those after you get a win, going out in Ibiza after must be... Must yeah, be come on, surely, yeah, surely you've got some weird. stories. <laughs> like, like, I went from, obviously, playing Barcelona, going with my car or in the coast to anywhere, to in Ibiza, the league is Ibiza, Mallorca, and Menorca. <laughs> what is going on outside? Out there? Yeah. He supports <laughs> Ibiza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was like Ibiza, Mallorca, and Menorca in one league. Mm-hmm. So teams from the three islands. So obviously, to play a game, you go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, like, take a plane, play... Well, coach from the airport to the thing and play. And it took me a while to get used to. Like the first four or five months, I didn't really perform. And the gaffer was like looking to get rid of me. And then people thought like, give him a chance because obviously he's just got here and he has to adapt really. It's not easy. Like people, like taking two planes before playing a game of football is mm-hmm. would, mad. Would but you stay in a hotel at least? Yeah, obviously okay, you go into that. a hotel, you chill a little bit, but yeah. still like you, you walk up at like 6 a.m. Yeah. Take a plane, take a coach, wait in the hotel, take another coach, and yeah. then, you know, and if it's Menorca, you have to go plane to Mallorca, plane to Menorca, chill, you know, and you know how it is to fly, like, it takes so much of your energy, energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it saps you. 100%. Yeah, so it was tough, and then after the five months, I stopped performing, and then obviously I stayed there for another year, did really well in my second year, got, got a call up to, like, the um, islands team, so... In, in like the county team sort of mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. can't, county national, not national team Ibiza C Ibiza C that's no you is. know what I mean like, <laughs> I don't know if like if you get called for the Kent um, the county, county. Yeah, Kent, yeah, yeah. county yeah. So, you guys have region, I, never yeah. called, region, I, yeah. I never got called for the Catalonia one but I got called for the islands for the Valerican. Um and it was good and obviously that caught attention from people and then I went into a team in Mallorca uh, which our our aim was to get promoted because they got relegated last year, the the year before mm-hmm. and uh, there was like money problems. Mm-hmm. Another beef. Yeah, yeah <laughs> he snuck that one in there. Yeah, too. yeah. he oh. tried to. Yeah. <laughs> was there was there any teams after that or was this when? Yeah, and then was... I was without a team. I was in Barcelona. I just didn't know what to do. Um, and obviously I had a friend that's when I moved to England I had a friend playing in at Haybridge and he was doing this England the chance thing which says like a week training and mm. people watching and just like scouts everywhere apparently was there was, it, there was, was so many but yeah. 
there wasn't like uh, the 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 manager of the of the week mm-hmm. was the manager of his club, mm-hmm. and obviously he's now one of my best friends, uh, Jody, um, and he was like, look, me, my brother, and one of my best friends from Ibiza who also came. He was like, I want to see you free with English people, not just with people that came from Spain trying the same thing as you. Yeah. Like you're far better than them, but mm-hmm. I want to see how you are with. Was it was it always an ambition to to go to England, like as you were growing up, or was it literally just coincidence that your friend was? There? No, the year before, the year before, when I went to Mallorca, I had a call up from Guillem Balaguer. You know Guillem Balaguer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we talked about the other day. World famous. And wow. Yeah. He was like, look, he contacted me. He was like, would you come to Bigger Suite United? Bigger Suite Club. And I was like, listen, I need to pay my car. Mm-hmm. And obviously he was not offering money or anything. He was like, we'll help with car, with mm-hmm. money, like with help with the work, mm-hmm. finding you a job and we'll help finding you your house. Mm-hmm. But obviously I was like, I can't really risk it. You know what I mean? It's too risky for, like, I, I was not prepared. Let's mm-hmm. say that way. And then the year after I was like, yeah, I think I'm ready now to go to England. And just that happened. I was like, something happened for a reason. And, and at the time... I had to make a decision to con- just about having to pay for that week. The AFE, which is the like the PFA, mm-hmm. they in Spain they do like the PFA team. Mm-hmm. So people that has no club, they go into different countries and do like games against teams, awesome. like a mm-hmm. trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously it was like two or three weeks, all paid for. Going to like I think it was like Czech Republic and somewhere else. I was like, I need to decide if going for free, or doing the same thing only for a week. Not as professional, but risking it for England. I was like, come on. Because there was a bit of a um, high expectation of... Because I was the player with most experience of yes, yeah. coming. So they were like, yeah, they would really want to see you. I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> there we go. It's yeah. almost good as well to have, you know, the seed planted. Oh, do you want to come to England? You thought about it. And then it was like, no, I'm not going to. But then another year later, when another opportunity comes along... You're more prepared because you've already yeah. previously thought about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and it's almost like it's come again for a reason. Like yeah. I should jump at this. Yeah, that's and true. the car was paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I literally yeah. finished my, my pay. Yeah, mm-hmm. finished finished paying my car. But yeah, no, and it was just like the 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 place where football like was born. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be there. I want to mm-hmm. go to places like historic places. I want to play in like I don't know like Leyton or in like places I played. Mm-hmm. And that was my my thought, you know, like I want to go there, see see what I obviously, maybe I go there and in a year I have to go back because yeah. I haven't made it, but just wanted to try really. How was it upon arrival? Like, did you struggle with the the language and, or was it smooth sailing? It was funny because you know me, like I I just take everything like mm-hmm. for banter, so it was, mm-hmm. it was it was hard, but because of the way I am, it was more funny. Like mm-hmm. other people would probably struggle. Mm-hmm. But I just took it as like funny. Like I start working in a place which was like wax, um, cl- like what you the wax. Yeah, no. but <laughs> doing the machines, like doing all the cables and it, like you know, all, all the wax layers. I had to go like I don't know, like a twenty meters or thirty meters, like alongside with everyone, and then chop it and like. Obviously, I was trying to communicate and interact while we was doing it, and then one day I got dragged out by the manager. He was like, look. You're talking too much. You're, you're swearing too much. Like, <laughs> so the voice is the first yeah. word that you learned. Yeah, yeah. And I probably said to him, now, <laughs> wow, that's I know you're not editing sorry, this. I know sorry, you're sorry. not. I probably said to him, I probably said to him, no, I'm not talking too much. I'm, I'm trying to communicate. I need to speak English. I need to mm-hmm. learn. Mm-hmm. And because um, he didn't let me, I was like, okay, I'm leaving in two weeks then. <laughs> and in a month, I left. So after a month, I left and I went as a waiter and I didn't have a clue of English. Really? Of being a waiter of the menu. So the first week and a half, it was hilarious, mate. I was going to table. People was asking me for a red glass of Merlot. I was like, well, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> I was coming back to my, to my team and saying, like, can you come with me? I don't, I don't understand. I, I will understand, like, pizza, carbonara, yeah. um, I don't know, um, bolognese, because yeah, it yeah. sounds sort of the same in yeah. Spanish. It's crazy now to think, because you have, like, an English accent. Yeah. You do have like a little Spanish in yeah, his accent. Yeah, Bellerin about the accent. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It definitely is. But it, it, been, it was funny, mate. It was funny. Like coming to, to a table and literally not get anything back and say, uh, one second, uh, my teammate's coming. <laughs> teammate? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, my, 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 my mate's coming. But I remember even like, obviously, if you're working in a restaurant, you should say, 
what would you like? Yeah. It's more formal. Yeah. And I was like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I you told me this before. I know, I know. I'm like, what, what do you want? want? And people was like, huh? <laughs> and then obviously people, after a month or so, people start to ask him questions like, oh, where you come from? And obviously interacting with people, I start learning. And obviously I, I was very boring at football as well. Like, oh, how do you say set? Like I was explaining, set, imagine yeah. me explaining the situation. So I was like, with the ball, imagine me, the, the goal there, I'm yeah. like, Pass, yeah, yeah how, yeah, yeah. or switch, how did they say switch? And people was like learning, like teaching me, it was funny, man. It was very funny, but it, it was just tough as well, because mm-hmm. obviously you're in a country, you don't, you don't know everyone, anyone, it's just how people welcome you, really, mm-hmm. if you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so how was your sort of first season, obviously playing football, and maybe the different style of football, how did you adapt to that, and how was it, and what level was that? It was at the eighth tier, so eighth tier. three, no, two below. So step four. Step four, yeah, yep. Cambridge. Um, honestly, when I got there, I remember the pitch being so nice. Like, really? It was l- a carpet. I was like, oh my God, that is They so got an nice. Astro? Now they do, but before it wasn't. Oh, really? It was grass. And I promise, the first two months, mate, unbelievable. It was like carpet. I was like, I'm, bl- I'm going to play so well here. Mm-hmm. It was massive as well. And obviously, Reese, um, Reese Graham was there. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he started playing because obviously I, I was in the bench and then he left and I played because he left. I started playing yeah. and doing well and obviously no one took me from, from my spot after. But yeah, I wasn't starting because he was there and he was just the main man and then he left. I think he went to Braintree or something or mm-hmm. Bilariki. I don't, I don't remember. But I think he Braintree. Um, and yeah, just it was different, man. It's it just like from trying to play to like physical and mm-hmm. aer- aerial battle and just balling behind and running behind and obviously I'm, I'm a person that likes it more feet than going mm-hmm. in behind but I remember just saying when he comes to the big striker I'll just start running he mm-hmm. like, will come to you and mm-hmm. I'm, I, I remember playing with, with him he was one of the best players I played with up top he was called Cali and we used to say tank because he was massive mm-hmm. like, massive but he was so good on the ball mm-hmm. and he also find me like I would make a run he would also like pass it to me and uh, yeah we had a good team as well it was just good. It was it was like probably the perfect team for transitioning yeah, yeah, from Spain to England, mm-hmm. I'd say. And I think still like your style of play, obviously you like to get the ball, but you're quite a big lad anyway. Like you're not a little five foot five mm-hmm. Spanish lad who yeah, doesn't yeah. want to get involved. Like you're pretty happy to get stuck in. Obviously it might have been tougher at the start, but I feel like you physically you just had to adapt to yeah. it, didn't you? Yeah, I was so skinny. To adapt really? to the team's play style. My arm was half. And I'm not having a good arm. Anyway. Yeah. But he was half of mine now. Really? Yeah, I, I can show you a picture later. Well, we'll put it up. Up. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can put it there. The, of the first day of yeah. England, the chance when I'm like there. Seriously, my arms look yeah. like, I don't know, like I'm a drug addict or something. Like <laughs> Seriously, they're like these two. How boy. long was you there for? Uh, one year. One year. Where did you? And wait, and when you were actually there, you played against Maidstone. No? Oh yeah, yeah we so... got we got to the first round proper in the FA Cup. Played Exeter. We gave him a tough job. We, it was three one at the end, but up until the third one, which was a mistake by my keeper, which was unbelievable. Cooling about. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was unbelievable. That's what like, he doesn't want. We probably got there because of him because we had a couple uh, penalty shootouts. He, he was unbelievable. Really? He saved like three, but penalty shoot. It was incredible, Samba and. Um, and obviously we got to the FA Trophy as well. We played at the Gallagher and we lost 2-1. Uh, we got rocked a little bit. I've seen the highlights actually. I think I've... We got rocked a little bit. I have bit. to look at that after. It's before the stands were... Is it before one of the stands was built? Or no, uh, it, it no the, Gal- the, the no. Gallagher was there. No, it was Gallagher. No, but like the one the Genko, behind the, the, Genko the, Genko the Genko was it? The big Genko one. No, the Genko was there. Oh, was yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was probably uh, maybe the first year or the second. But right. he was there. I remember cause my family was there. Um... And yeah, we got. I think the first goal was offside or, or, or foul. I don't know. There was someone about the first goal, dodgy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got robbed by Maston. Um, but yeah, I scored. I scored in front of a Ginko as well. Uh, I we put the goal up, don't worry, we put it up. Yeah, it was good. It was good, goal, good volley. Um, and we gave him a good, you know, like to be in a different division. You, but you know how it, how it goes. Like when you go to a place and you're like the underdogs. Like, no, you have nothing to lose, really. So you step up. Yeah, you step up as well. And and they normally, like, ah, oh, this is going to be easy. Like, they two or three leagues below. And it was tough, mate. It was tough for them. Mm-hmm. And so after after Haybridge, where did you then, then go on from there? Um, I went to Lincoln, but 
the the story that not many people know is that I had a two year contract from Liverpool, uh, and I should have gone there because I I was like, yeah, I'll sign it. I'll, I was about to sign it, but then sorry, where Newport, Newport, Newport County, County. Yeah. where yeah. in, in Lille? Yeah, because well, I did Lee a trial too. when I was there. I, I, I had a I had a ban right for a couple of games, and they sent me there for a trial, and they were like, yeah, we'll sign you for two years, uh, all good, and I was like. Wow, it's two leagues in like two years in League Two, like yeah. it's incredible. That's like, a four division jump, yeah, yeah in yeah. one season. Yeah, and as the well. funniest thing, uh, and this only a couple of persons, pe- a, couple, a couple of people know, and one of them is the one that I was sharing room with the first year, that we was, we will have dinner and we will have, in the TV videos of like League Two stadiums, and I'm like I'm gonna play there next season. I, I want to play there, like watching I don't know like, li- li- um oh, a stadium like Stockport and yeah. shit like that. I was like, oh man, I need to play. Hey, but New- yes. Newport's, you ever seen Newport's ground, the county ground? Newport's, yeah. it's all right, man. No, it's, it's, cool. an absolute, it's an absolute I like dive. It. It's an absolute dive. Is I like it? I watch oh it in the United God. game. It's one of the worst stadiums you'll see. I like it though. No, no, but going away. You'd yeah, be away, away. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I was like, yeah, and obviously to be there, the, the season after, I was like, man, this is weird. But as I was saying, like, I should have signed there and uh, obviously Haybridge and was asking for more money than they wanted to pay. And ah, I so said, that's what happened. I'm going to pay from my wages, take it from my wages. If it was, I don't know, 500, I'm like, put 400, I'll pay it from my wages. And they didn't allow me to do so. Really? And obviously I went to Lincoln for six months only because they offered me a contract like one day before the window closes. What league were Lincoln at the time? Conference League Prem? two. League two. two? And they won the league that year. With the Cowboys? Wow. Yeah. So I, I wasn't champion because I was only six months. Right, okay. And my contract ended the day before they were playing Everton away in the FA Cup. No. no. Oh. And then Newport played Man City that no. year in the FA Cup. <laughs> oh, so you could you... think I've been lucky, but... Yeah. You know, that's how... Football is, I'm sorry. <laughs> for saying, but... How, how, how was that experience for you, jumping, making that jump from step four to it was, league two? It was, I don't know, I found it easier to play really? with, the, with, with people. Better quality like, better players. Quality. Like, yeah. There was people coming from like... Championship, yeah, like, alone and someone stuff. was captain of Premier League before. I was like, what, what the hell? Like, and they yeah. were good, and really? they were old, and they were so good, really. But obviously, it makes you improve. Like, I was topping at the stats in pre season, obviously, I wasn't trial in pre season. Pre- I went to Malaga with them in pre season, like for trial. I was stopping at the stats, I was scored the most goals in, in pre season trainings. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we did like a competition or mm-hmm. in, in inside competition. Um, and obviously, when I played, I, I did well. Um, I remember he offered me a contract at Boston away when we played the last game, that preseason game. Uh, but it was only six months, and I was like, "Come on, man! Like, surely mm-hmm. only six months? Why mm-hmm. six months?" Um, but yeah, I, I find that I think it's a level I could play at, mm-hmm. especially at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I, I suppose was saying, like, need that's, that that's why. That's how football works. Like you have a two-year contract for something that's not in your hand because everything was fine with me. Mm-hmm. Like didn't get through, and then you ended up going there, and then because it's only six months, you go Concord, which is two leagues below, mm-hmm. and then hey, from there you have to work your way up again. Is that where you ended up then after? Yeah, after Lincoln. six months, I went to Concord, right, and then which was in the National League South. We made the prom- we made playoffs, wow. and then the day we had the day for training before playoffs, we were told we couldn't play playoffs. So that must have been so frustrating then day before the playoffs being told that you're not you're not allowed to be involved. Yeah, well imagine you're getting to playoffs, you go on a Thursday mm. for training to prepare the game for Saturday and mm. they were like, Oh, there's no training. You can't make the players, we've been withdrawn. Like, what? Was that? Yeah, the ground doesn't meet the the criteria for for players to be played in here. I'm like, well, not for players, but to be nationally. in the national league. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously, thought you could have told me this before signing here because I would have signed for someone else maybe. yeah and obviously you could have told us well we was trying to make it mm-hmm. and it was just weird but at the time I was training with um, Dagenham so I was keeping myself full time because mm-hmm. um, Jody my manager at Haybridge was assistant manager or coach right, at perfect. Dagenham so he was like yeah come in so he can have a look at you the manager who yeah. was um, Peter Taylor mm-hmm. Um, oh, big name, big, former big, big name. former England, England manager, yeah. <clears throat> and, and obviously. So he, it was Gav Hoyt there at the time. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. No yeah. way. No yeah. way. He was in the 
like they used to call it the rep British squad, which is like the people that oh, didn't right. pl- like didn't used to play. So that it's because he's tagging them rep British. They were like the, the starting <laughs> and the people in the squad, and then they were calling the rep British. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're so like, close to Gav. Then I genuinely yeah, just thought that was yeah, because yeah, of Maystone. Yeah, yeah. You had a really good relationship. No, at Maystone we just build it more because I, I was oh, cast. You go way then. back then. Was Lamar yeah. Reynolds there as well? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Then Martin that's mad. and Gav yeah. were in the rep British squad both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so obviously, I was training with the rep British squad. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, he was just training there, and obviously, I liked the manager. He liked me, and I was like, "You signed there?" Yeah, then, and I you? signed there the, the, the year after. In League Two. No, in National League. National League. League. And then up to Christmas, all good. I, I was not meant to start. I seen like there was people with more uh, status than me, mm-hmm. sort of. Um, but obviously, I started doing well. Like I was the player with most involved in more goals mm-hmm. and assist, like. With goals and assists, goals and assists mm-hmm. by Christmas, and then they sat pretty to say like because we weren't doing well as a team. Um, Jody took over a couple mm-hmm. games, and I was like, please let let him, let him take the job because I would do really well because obviously he knows me. I performed at my best Trust. at the moment with him. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. they signed Darren Mamahan, and literally changed the shape to a three five two, and it's like there's no wingers. You're not going to be involved. Really? Well, he didn't and just shipped you out. First or? game. First game. Not to count their way, bench, zero minutes. That is tough with the, uh, how 3-5-2 has kind of come back into fashion the last, <clears throat> yeah. like, 10 years. It really has killed a lot of yeah. wings. Like, I mean, I can play in the 10. I've been playing in the 10. Yeah. At Tottenham, I can play in the 10, but he's just... He's, he, 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 we keep saying it. It goes back to manager's preference. Yeah. yeah. Just like, you've gone from playing people. loads of games, and then a new manager comes in, and he's like, right, now you're not involved. Exactly you won't play exactly for what we, said it, we say it literally every pod. He signed we? a couple of players. Yeah. Like, obviously, from... Teams that he had before, and then that's it. Really, and that you just knew then, and that was you done. That's it. I've not got out of it. Not in the squad. Not in the squad. Ah. And then I went to Spain on COVID, and whilst I was in Spain, I had. By the time I was lucky, I sort of triggered my clause for next year, so I had a contract. Games. Right. Okay. On the last one. Really. On the last one with Jody, I hit it. Wow. Uh, it was about 20, 21 starts or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember hitting it by the last one. I was like, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you sort of then, when you had to go back home for COVID, yeah, you were like, right. So I knew I, knew I had I've to go got back this to England. But Perfect. So obviously I was furloughed, blah, blah, blah. And then I was in Spain. I remember him calling me saying, look, obviously the, we had a flat that wasn't in the contract, but was spoken. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we don't put it in the contract because of taxes. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they called me, oh, you haven't got the flat no more. And uh, if you want to stay in Spain, because you're not going to play for me at all. Like, really? I'm like, oh, okay, when's, when's the first day of training oh, for pre-season? I'm like, uh, first of July, see you there. Hung up. <laughs> really? First of July, I was there with my mask. And the- but you had to go there, otherwise it's just not paying you. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. had yeah. to. So I had to come two weeks pre off yeah. uh, because of COVID rules. Mm-hmm. And to, I remember uh, getting a call yeah. from the chairman mm-hmm. saying, if I see you at the ground, or at the flat, or anywhere around the club in these two weeks, I'll call police myself. Really? Mad. Did the quarantine wow. yourself? Yeah, and it, and it was like, send me your new uh, address, which I was in a friend's house, in a mattress, on the floor, with the guy I was living the first year, that he let me be there for a couple of months. That sounds like Connor at the moment. Mate. Yeah, <laughs> with the air mattress. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah air mattress, um, with all my backs on the floor, everything there. And uh, I remember him saying, like, I would send someone to pick up your stuff and send it to you. I'm like, no one's touching my stuff, mate. Like, I left it there. And then I remember, mate, it was so horrible. So really? Horrible. Yeah. yeah, so basically they were forcing me out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to train in double sessions, second session. They were like, no, you can't train. I'm going to try and like, see the trial list. Mm-hmm. I played the first 45 minutes uh, in the first preseason game, and then I didn't play no more. And obviously when I was training there, before they set the manager, Peter Taylor, Harry Terrace was the assistant manager. And then he came with uh, Hack at Mason. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to take me on loan. And he ended up just, obviously, I got a payout from Dagenham. Mm-hmm. And I came for, for, for Mason. But obviously, COVID hit it again. And I went to Weymouth because the league was going to shut down. I remember that because I was yeah. following the club. I used to, obviously, just to check how my hometown team's doing. I remember you leaving. Didn't you do well before you left to Yeah, Wales? I did like, Cause I I remember, like I remember, five goals and five assists. Bro, in like I, remember, games or something like that. I swear to God, I remember seeing that you'd left and I was like, 
Why is he left for? Like, yeah, but I left so well like, two Mesa. weeks after the season was done. Yeah, I actually remember and that's that. That's so when clearly. I was car schooling with Gaff. How come? Because right. I was living in Thamesford with you. So you went, you went to Maystone and then you left then to go to Weymouth. Yeah. Yes, right. and then at okay. Weymouth, I start playing. Then I stopped playing, and uh, I think the whole thing with, with that with Dagenham, even though I was strong to overcome it, he, he affected, must yeah, yeah, affected it me. Must my, be mentally, my hundred percent, of course. And I ended up leaving a month before. I was like, I can't do this no more. Like, mm-hmm. I, I was not happy. You need a break. Not, not good habits, like mm-hmm. sleeping late. And mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, I couldn't so you took a sleep. break from football? I, went, I just went, beginning of April, I was like, I'm, I'm leaving. Right. Like, I'm leaving. I went home. Right. Uh, just saw my just family. Because it was reset. COVID, I couldn't see my family for the whole year as well. Of course, well, of course. Which was made it tougher. Like, imagine, obviously, my mum knew I was, I was living at my friend's, but didn't know I was taking... Like, you know, like away from trainings, mm-hmm. not in the squad for pre-season when you're meant to, because they mm-hmm. it's their, like... So it's like a duty of care, like you, ha- you yeah, have to be able like to have a chance you, to You get paid to, to be in every training, mm-hmm. and they, their duty is to make your feet. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the club, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, if mm-hmm. they don't want to play you, fine, but they have to make your feet. Yeah. Um, so obviously it was tough, and I just, like, I needed a break. I need a really... Well, well, like I was like two or three months in Spain, mm-hmm. mostly April, May, June. Mm-hmm. And then before I went, I already spoke with Harry and, and with Terry Harris and, and Hack and made it all signed. I remember leaving my stuff at Helen's. Oh, wow. The car at the car park. Wow. Right. Okay. Um, so they really helped me out already. And uh, I was really happy. I was like, mate. Two or three months to do a proper reset. That must have really helped you, knowing that you've got Maystone to go yeah, back to. Security. Otherwise, yeah. being from abroad, when you go on holidays, and you should know this, because obviously now you've unluckily been released, mm-hmm. that you're going to bomb holidays, and you're thinking, where am I going to live? Where am I going to play? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, no, 100%. It's, mm-hmm. it's tough. It can be very tough, 100%. It can be very, yeah. like, I mean, it's That's my biggest worry, is how, how is this podcast going to continue? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that, I've you know so many what? messages about it. I, can't I know, me too. Uh, yeah, it's funny as well. I've seen like people saying stuff on Twitter about, oh my God, is the podcast the pod. going to live on? Like, yeah, the pod, and some people are saying that Gaffer didn't like the podcast, which is why we've all been released. Yeah, the podcast. We're going to find stay. that one out soon. We're going to have a little meeting and make we sure. We probably do it on Discord. Like, three faces on Discord. Yeah, yeah we, we, we want so many. We want it to be like, know, know, it's so much better. It has, it has to bounce off well. Either, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll find solutions. And I'm only going home for, I think it's six weeks, and then I'm going to come back, and these boys are going to come out for 10 days. And we have some some good some really good content. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, a few. Yeah. In fact, I won't. I won't do spoilers. Don't spoil it. Yeah. I won't Don't do spoilers. Spoil but we should be doing at least. I think three. We got some couple. good ones coming yeah. up. Yeah. Some good ones. Yeah. Stay tuned. They might have to move up to this podcast. So I'm, 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 I'm enjoying this. it so much. Yeah. But carry, carry on though about yeah, obviously no. having that time off. And yeah, coming so obviously back to I signed and like I was saying, like it's just a release. Yeah. So it was like a weight off my shoulders. Go holidays, proper enjoy my holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy my family. Get like the energy that your family time brings you. You know, mm-hmm. like you you should know as well. You're, yeah, you're away from home, and um, it was just good, man. Like three months full of energy, full of enjoyment. Like, and then actually I prepared myself so well for preseason. I remember smashing all preseason like tests and and just. From pre-season, I was like, this has to be the season. Like, it has to be, like... I got really prepared for it. And obviously, it was the first season after COVID. Mm-hmm. I remember the first game at home, Hemel Hempstead. We was in the changing room. Hacken was saying um, his bits. And he stopped. He was like, listen to them. And they were singing Sweet Caroline. Mate, I was literally on tears. Really? Like, we, like not on tears in the changing room, but I was like, oh, you, you shut up. Please and just let me go out and just enjoy. Embrace it. I, really want. I remember when I was stepping in the Gallagher with the fans for the first time, the first game. I was with tears in my eyes of emotion of like finally playing with people again and yeah. in a place where it's rocking. It was so it was not packed, but it was <clears throat> so many people there because obviously people wanted to be back with football. And I must say that the way you play, you're you're a bit of a showman, aren't you? So like, and that, that's a. And that's no disrespect to you, but that's kind of the way you play. You're flary, you're exciting. You, you get people you off feed off the crowd. You feed, yeah. off the, feed off the crowd. So when you play in COVID and you don't have that atmosphere around you and it's almost like a pre in front of every game, mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's harder to get up for. And then when you get that crowd and you get that spark yeah. of energy from everyone else, oh, did, that really, that really, that's boost. one of the main reasons why I did well, Mason, I miss it. 
But come here, uh, I don't want to skip forward too much. We'll come back to the season that you had. But do you feel like that mental reset gave you the platform then when you yeah. come to Mesa and it yeah. helped you just smash it? Yeah, because yeah. I came here, I've good habits, good diet. Had the energy from the family, yeah. got yourself like, in going, shape. Like going to the gym every day. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember one day Joe Law saying, like, you look lean. Like, getting bigger. Yeah. And I, like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> he's nah, moved out he's, 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 he's guys that I'm not a big fan of gym. Like, obviously, you have to do it as a professional. Mm -hmm. And, like, obviously, when I got injured, I was every day in the gym yeah. and mm -hmm. just doing my work. But it's, it's something that I find tough to find it motivation. the motivation for. Of course. Like, just for the sake of looking better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, it was, it was just, as I was saying, like, good, good reset. Like, it's just obviously time with family, friends in a better weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the sun just makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you you prepare yourself because you know what you're going to come about. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's what you've had I that saw experience the in the before, league, of course. With Haybridge, and yeah. I knew how rocky it was. Yeah, 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 and yeah. with Bromley, because I I've been at Bromley on loan when I was at Lincoln, and I came here to play, and I, it's a derby. Yeah. And I saw that and my friends went like, because I had two friends come in and they were like, man, this is mad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I remember from that day, uh, and then when I was at Dagenham, I played here as well and I scored. So it's like, I played two games here, I scored, so it must be something with the crown, like I'm really mm -hmm. excited to play here. Mm -hmm. And obviously, since we, since, and then the season started and then first game, two goals, I'm like, it must be something with the crown. Just <laughs> momentum took you then, Yeah, was it? and then from there, yeah. I remember the first goal, it was mad, like, it was just, the excitement from everyone. Mm -hmm. And then obviously from there, we start building like a relationship crowd team. I saw a lot of videos when I was watching from Ireland. And, uh, you led the chant. I know it was at the back end yeah. of the season, but you led it with your crutch. You remember? Oh, mate. That's a dart for the way. Dart for yeah. the yeah. I got injured. Mm -hmm. we'll, get, we'll get on to that. We'll get on to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get on to that. Speaking about the crowd, I spoke about before, but obviously I played against you for, for Hungerford. And like you're saying about how good the crowd was, we were 2 nil up you scored a penalty and then the second half we came out and I just, you just felt like Mason were going to win. Yeah, we're going to win. You just felt like Mason were going to win. We got a man sent off in like 67th minute or something mm -hmm. and you just knew Mason were going to win and then within like five minutes, Dom scored, Barham <laughs> scored and we just, we just gutted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, go, go. No, I was just going to say that the impact that a crowd can have, especially at this level where I think Maybe at the highest of high levels, it still makes a difference, but they're so, so professional. I feel like here players maybe could be a bit more influenced by the crowd. I think yeah. at any level you are, bro. Yeah, but, no, no, but, but at some level you get you get used to it and not you don't get complacent about the crowd, but like it just becomes like almost background noise. Whereas That's when you I'm go saying. from playing, like if you compare when we played, I don't know, when we played away, even at Worthing the other day, Worthing, there was, a, there was a big crowd, but if you compare the Worthing game to the Avery game, Oh, well, yes. That's so different. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I so, thought you meant, like, for example, a team going to Liverpool, or they might not, they might not be, the crowd might not have an effect. What's, what's no, no. not a big game for Liverpool? Let's say, let's say Burnley. That would be the biggest game of our careers. You know, it's a massive stadium, the that. crowd's yeah. there, even if it's a dead rubber match. Yeah, I get Versus that. when we played Truro mm -hmm. at Gloucester. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a people. massive mm -hmm. difference in mm -hmm. atmospheres, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And Maidstone's right at the very top for... Yeah. For non-league, so yeah. that must have been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and obviously, like you were saying, like Worthing, they get good fans, and I'm obviously there now. But it's not the same. It's not. It's not, not the same. loud. And they were saying, I remember in precision, I'm going to miss the fans. I said, really? They're like we're here, like we're loud here. And I was like, well, well let's see. And it's not, Doesn't. It's not really. the same. It's not, not the same. same. Yeah. It, obviously, at Tottenham now, it's the same. Like we get, I don't know, thousand, mm -hmm. thousand five hundred, thousand eight hundred, mm -hmm. and they just sing a couple times, but. Mason's like constant, constant. Yeah. And you attack and you make a tackle and you like, yes. And yeah. in the game. There's a corner, yes. And there's, yeah. you, do a, you do something with a bow and you do a good pass. And make, yes, and they start singing your name. I'm like, next one, I'm going to do something even better. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and like, obviously, I agree with so. I think for me, it made me better. Yeah. Because of the way I play. Yeah. Like the, the, the more crowd and the more noisy they get, I get better, I think. And that's Such why a good I miss mentality so to have. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mason, and I just openly say it, and I openly say it yeah. anytime. But it might come across as a stupid question, but best, I was going to say, best season of your career. Oh my God, I got it right. <laughs> you said it correctly. I got it right. That's how bad yes, it was it, in his yes, brain. Yes, he was saying best career of your, of your of season. Your season. <laughs> I can't believe I just got it right. Yeah. Yeah. But would you say 
best career of your career. Yeah. 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 I can't believe I did that. I did that right. But was it the best season of your career? Yeah. Well, the, at Haybridge, obviously, I scored 30. So in right. terms of numbers, it's better that one. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we got further in the cup, further in the FA Trophy. Mm-hmm. That season was unbelievable as well. Mm-hmm. But the levels are different. And obviously, I didn't, we made it to promotion, but we didn't win it. <clears throat> With Mason, it was the best and the worst because obviously I got my injury at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a bit of bittersweet mm-hmm. feeling, like celebrating just on crutches. I couldn't really, like, I always say it was unbelievable to win the league, but the moment the, blown, the, the whistle was blown by the ref, that it meant that we were champions. Mm-hmm. I couldn't run anywhere in the pitch, jump with anyone. Like, I remember being with the, with the Fischer, with Jack, like what guarded me, me and crutches, trying to run, crying my eyes out because I couldn't like, do anything. Like, mm-hmm. And it was just like a mix of emotions. Obviously, you're so happy, yeah. but at the same time, you're so frustrated. You can't run, you can't jump. And even though I did, um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's tough. But obviously, it was the best season like. So take us back to that Dartford away where unfortunately you had your uh, your injury. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I, it's just on the warm up. I was like a bit slippery, and I was like, should I wear studs? Should I wear? Like, I, I slipped a couple of times on the warm up. I was like, what's going on today? Like, it's weird. Do you, like I don't know. It was a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, one of the plays, I just got pushed off the pitch. Not even hard but because he's grass and astra got stuck in the astra and my knee went did you and, uh, but you weren't wearing studs you're still wearing molds no molds yeah um and i remember the pain was mad mad but for a minute and then literally beth came oh beth this is like hard oh, like bad and then I, I remember walking with her back to the bag out and he was gonna suck me off i'm like no no no, no i'm fine i'm fine start moving my knee i'm fine i'm fine i came back Nearly scored, got cleared of the line, and then one long pass from uh, Joe. Uh, Joe, I think it's the one from Joe. Did like a sort of diac, and then I tried to jump and turn and bring it down. And as soon as I jumped and turned, oh, mate, he was like, that as oh, I heard it as well. And then the pain was the same as the before, but even harder. And then on the inside as well. And I was like, nah. And obviously Beth came. He was in the same sort of area. Um, and I remember just coming up near and like just crying. I, I actually have a, a picture with George, like trying to just console. Yeah, yeah I've seen and that. And Jamie, Jamie's in the background. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. You yeah. get and Ella Kobe's on the bench, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. on the bench that game, and he was like, "Come on, you'll be fine, you'll be fine." And obviously, I remember going into the chamber room. They already did the, the I don't know how you the test. Yeah, it, I know. They pushed down the shield. Pushed down, yeah, and he was sort of like going a little bit. Like, it's I'm not relaxed. sure. I'm not sure because obviously it just happened. Like just. Yeah. So uh, talk us through. Obviously, you don't actually know you've you've ruptured it yet. Yeah. Talk us through because Regan's told me a few times about the actual day when you found out in your house that you and Regan lived together. Yeah. Talk me through the phone call. Yeah, obviously, like you're saying, like I didn't know for like a week or two, um, and I was on crutches. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't move my knee. Knee was swollen. Um, and I went to do my MRI, someone took me there. Um, and then a couple of days later, I was just home having dinner, I think it was with Regan or, or my laptop just there, but Regan was sat down next to me and I got a call from, I think it was Luke, actually. Um, and he was like, I'm sorry to say this, but you have wrapped your eyes out completely. And, and I just didn't, I don't know, I don't know what I said, I just started crying. I remember like Regan standing up and just, cuddling me, trying to do whatever, but it was nothing to be done there. Like, it was just the worst feeling I've ever had in my life, I don't think. Obviously, you sort of knew, but you're hoping because you're getting better, your range of movement's getting better, and you're like, maybe I got away with it. <clears throat> and I don't know, mate. I just cried and cried and cried. I called my family, kept crying. <laughs> and, uh, and then from next day, really, I think that day I cried all that I had to cry. And then from the next day, it was like, okay, Let's get on with it. Go into the mindset of, right, it is yeah. what it is. It is what it is. And I can't change it. Just. And I must say that, obviously, it must have been so <coughs> frustrating for you <coughs> having such a pivotal um, season in your career, getting Maystone, not single-handedly, but you've had a, such a big part in getting Maystone to the National League, mm-hmm. and then you couldn't even, even 
play a game that season, but I must say that you attacked your rehab like you were just addicted to it, weren't you? You did everything that remember you on the FaceTime to Belen you all, know the, all the time, FaceTiming her whilst doing all the all the exercise and everything and you were just a model professional making sure that you knew I knew that this season now that you've had, I knew you were gonna be fine. I knew you were gonna get back because of how how well and how addicted you were to attacking attacking your rehab. But talk us through how frustrating it was not being able to then play in that season. And then obviously we didn't have a very successful season. Yeah, obviously I knew it was going to be, well, I was very unlucky again because my surgery was meant to be uh, the 19th of May, I think it was. And uh, I didn't go to Marbella to celebrate the title because I was like, I don't want to catch COVID or anything. I'll just stay home and then have my surgery. So I prioritised surgery prior to have a good time mm-hmm. Uh, which I, if I go back, I'll probably do my bear. Change it, yeah. Um, what happened? Did so you get postponed? And I was at home. My mum was home with me. Um, and the guy, what the family I was living with had COVID. But I was in my room most of the time. I tried not to, obviously I had to eat. I mm-hmm. had to, you know. And uh, the day of my test, positive. And they said, we're going to postpone it for seven weeks. I'm like, Huh? Seven, no, seven weeks. And I said, if it's seven weeks, I'm doing it with someone else. That's what I said on the phone. And then they said three and a week, three and a half weeks. Still, so, that's long. I know. Yeah. And then my mum was here for like three weeks already. Just wait. So she went back. Right. And then my sister that day called me saying she's having a baby. I was like, all emotions crying again, obviously. And I, I was like, little Liam. Yeah. And then obviously I went on holiday. So again, I needed the, I needed to, to sort of. Taking it all in. Digest somehow. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I went on Santorini with someone random. <laughs> nice. Hey, hey, hey. 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 My, my we know all about those holidays. My missus is not going to like this, but I went with a random girl. Yeah, yeah. 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 First date. Why are you on second date? Yeah. Second date. I know. It's second okay. date, I like second that. Date. I like his brother more. No, I know about those holidays. <laughs> and then obviously I went home for two weeks and then I came back, had my surgery. My mum came, bless her. She couldn't speak English. She was driving me to training, do you remember? Mm-hmm. Um, it was hilarious. Um, you came out to like Nando's with us and stuff. Yeah, Nando's. Can't speak any English at all. Oh, man, everyone, every, everyone's going Nando's. Could you take me there and just eat with us? And she would just come there. And she's, she's there, like, like <laughs> that's her, yeah. Um, so she came for a month, and obviously after a month, I had my my first checkup, and I went home. I carried on there, paid my own physios uh, in there, uh, and obviously I came back. I was like, start running, and then I had the pain in the patella. But obviously, since I came back, everyone was like, oh, when you're back, when you're back. And I remember you. You're like rushing, not rushing, but just like, yeah, you're getting the feeling that I want to get that feeling of playing because mm-hmm. everyone's expecting yeah. me to play. And then it got to nine months. I had my checkup. And they were like, no, you got to go back to the gym and strengthen it even more because Patella is that way. Mm-hmm. So they stopped me training with the team, which I was close to playing. I remember your first uh, session actually at Kings Hill. And after the session, it was, was it Gaffer? Or was it Hack? No, Hack was talking and I remember you were just crying, crying just bawling out with tears. Yeah. And you were just like, I didn't think I'd be able to, to get back this season. And then unfortunately, you then got another setback. No, it wasn't with Terry Hack. I was there. He was George. Uh, it was George. George. It was George. 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 I remember you. I, yeah, I, yeah. Completed I completely the whole forgot session. about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I was suspecting only to do half a session. Yeah. And then I did the whole session. But I remember the last day, the day after, my, my patella was painful. And that's actually the injury that I was yeah, suffering with. Yeah. In so both we were doing the same thing. Yeah, in, in both teams with Berlin. So what, what's so weird is that I was actually signed because because you were injured, which is so strange. I remember on on the phone that Hack Hack told me that you'd done your ACL, and I knew before it was even public knowledge or anything. Mm-hmm. And he said that's why we kind of want to bring you in. And then we actually never even played together. Yeah. But because I also got injured, and we actually spent so much time together, yeah, and we were so yeah. close because we were just spending every day together. Mm-hmm. And we had this, the same exercises. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I didn't have a lot of exercise. Right, let's not go into that. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> let's not say that. Well, we got exercises from Belen. We, yeah, which I was, was, I was getting, from Spain. The Spanish physio was, was getting my exercises as well, which is mm-hmm. mental. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say that way. You made your mind. Um, <laughs> I'll be released, actually. It doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, uh, and obviously, uh, I just carried on and obviously season finished and I asked, obviously, I got told that not gonna be in the in the team next year. And I asked, look, could you please just let me play five minutes so mm-hmm. I can just say I want to play for the first time. I'm back here because mm-hmm. it's the place I belong or I feel I belong. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
unfortunately I got told no and obviously mm-hmm. um, I went Worthing and I still had the same patella tendon uh, tendonitis but the physios there were like just carry on you'll go like you play with it and it will go you have to strengthen the gym mm-hmm. like you but carry it on and, and obviously we did specific work with them and they really helped me um, and obviously I start playing I had to take pills to play uh, on Fridays so like painkillers so the pain was gone on Saturday and mm-hmm. then after Saturday pain was back or like halfway through the game it would be back but I've already gone th- halfway so it was a bit frustrating but I still managed to play mm-hmm. um, and obviously I joined Totten because I couldn't really kick on properly because I was from the bench playing 50 from the bench and mm-hmm. I really needed like a run of games of course. and obviously it's Astro as well so I went to Totten which is um, grass. grass and I think that helped me and after two games my potato and like all of a sudden disappeared Really? Completely. Like, I feel it sometimes after games, but during the games, during training, nothing. Before, I was training really, like, my... So, for training, my pace would be 50, 50%. And obviously, it's hard to train at 50% and play at 100. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to mm-hmm. perform. Yeah. So, that's why I think this is and I probably didn't do as well as I should have done mm-hmm. at Webbing. Mm-hmm. Um, Can you take us back to... Obviously, I remember congratulating you when you went... <clears throat> To Worthing, and I remember the day that the fixtures came out that we were messaging. You were like, "I can't wait to be back at the Gallagher." Yeah, I like, wait, I have yeah. to be back at the Gallagher. Obviously, it wasn't the best day, but for Worthing, because obviously we did win. Yeah. But what was it like returning to the Gallagher, and even the reception that you got from the fans? Yeah, no, obviously it was good. It was, it was just frustrating. Like I was, we were saying before, like obviously I got to play in the right, which is not, it's the the only position in the pitch I hate. I would play midfield. I play in ten, in the nine, in the left, but not on the right. I just don't feel comfortable. And obviously they play me there and I didn't really do well. Like she was quite a good defender as well. Um, and obviously we lost 4-0, so it was like a bit of a, not the best day. Yeah. But obviously I still got a good reception and good, like, you know, a good feeling from the people and obviously still felt love and, and, and that was good. And obviously it carried on the season and then the game at home, I didn't get to play. And that was probably one, one point of, I probably need to get on loan somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is probably like sort of like a statement, even though it, it, it might not be, but it looks like it. It felt yeah. like it to you. Yeah, it felt like it. So obviously, I suppose to a couple of people, George, one of them, and um, uh, just ended up in Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, start playing. Like I was saying, my knee was fine, and I managed to play probably the last ten games without pain and everything, which is for me the biggest achievement this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, I scored quite a few goals, mm-hmm. like double figures in goals and assists. So. It's quite a good season for a first season back, thinking that I've been six, seven months of it with pain still. Mm-hmm. So it's what it's what you said there. You you're coming in fit to a season, yeah. Oh, sorry, being fit the previous season, you'll happily take 40, 40 plus games. Yeah, exactly. Very happy. Yeah. yeah. Coming back from ACL, that is yeah. impressive. Yeah, impressive so numbers. If what? I play Monday, it would be forty one games. And what I, a game to play in as well. I yeah, want to. Yeah, I, I want to. That, Where is the final actually played? Home. At Totten. Totten, yeah. Well, by the time this comes out, we'll know if they yeah. uh, if they're through or not. So yeah, yeah I want to ask you. And obviously, you've had the whole journey of I think how many months were you at? Like fourteen, I think. Fifteen in, months. Fifteen in total. What was like the hardest point of that rehab? Was it the initial after surgery? Was it coming back and then having to sit out again? What was the most difficult part? And what was the most rewarding as well in, in the whole journey? Uh it's a good question. I would say the most. It's when you're training with the team and you see you have to step up, like a step, a step yeah. up to the side again and go to the gym and not being able to train and ask and not be able to train and, you know. Um, and then obviously the best side is just when you're back. The, I remember that Horsham, like, not the best crowd, not the best crowd, not the best reception at all. Like, I, I, I always imagine in my mind while I was doing all my rehab how good that reception will be when I get back to the Gallagher playing there like the moment I step in there he's gonna go there he's gonna go mental mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna already have enough power to play the whole year mm-hmm. you know and obviously that not being the case it was a bit bittersweet but personally it's such a big achievement you know for 15 months working and working and working and working in the shadow 
mm-hmm. on the shape, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, so like when you step on it and you finish, I remember I get crying. I'm very emotional. I'm a, I'm a very emotional person. Um, yeah, I beat him at FIFA before and he was crying, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good lie. <laughs> um, no, but it's just obviously such an achievement, like a I personal imagine. achievement, you know? Can you imagine. feel like proud of yourself of how, how many days I've come from the Galaga mm-hmm. driving home crying mm-hmm. of frustration of not being able to train or not being able to do something or being told you have to go back two steps because something is not right. And mm-hmm. It's just hard. But I don't think that obviously everyone lo- wants to be a professional footballer when they're younger. It's a lot of people are idolised by kids and stuff. But I don't think that f- fans sometimes appreciate that you hear about injuries and our injuries can be so frustrating. But I don't think fans truly understand that when you have a big injury like an ACL and you know you're going to miss almost the whole year, it's so frustrating when you start coming back and then you get taken away because it is almost sometimes it feels like an us and them situation. Especially, well, Connie, have gone for it this year. I went for it last year with you. You're at the gym and the gym at Maidstone is not on the same site. You come in, you come in earlier than everyone else. You try to get some treatment. You don't get treatment a lot of the time, to be honest. Then you end up going to the gym whilst people train, you come back, try and get some treatment, no one else is there. And it's like, if, if there's only one person out injured at the time, it's just you on your own. And yeah. it's just you kind of fending for yourself. And if anyone gets injured at the club, the, the physios have to deal with it. And it can be really, I don't know, you feel quite lonely sometimes. Oh, so, yeah, like, especially yeah, yeah. coming from Spain as exactly. well. Exactly, and when people have yeah. moved away from home, yeah. honestly, it can feel like almost the world is against you and there's so yeah. much weight yeah. on your shoulders and you yeah. feel like almost no one is there for you. It can yeah. be so strange. So that's why it's, unbelievable how well you've done this season I think that's what makes it sorry but that's what makes it even more special then when yeah. you're saying there when you when you play for the first time mm-hmm. how re- rewarding that must feel that all the hard work has paid off all the hours where you've you've been on your own training when you've seen your teammates train you're like oh, I wish I was there you know I suppose it must make it so rewarding for you when you yeah. do finally come back you know yeah I mean? definitely and obviously you remember everything like when I was in Spain with the fishers I was yeah. like I remember in the in the swimming pool, walking again in the swimming pool for the yeah. first time, running, doing exercises, and you think now I see it, and it's like, oh, that was funny to do, mm-hmm. like because at the moment it was like, oh, I'm walking today in the swimming pool, it was painful, yeah. That, but at the moment you're cheered up because you're walking for again in the swimming pool, and then mm-hmm. the next step is like I'm gonna walk mm-hmm. out the swimming pool, yeah. and it's like little steps, little steps, and like you were saying, then all of a sudden it's like no. Someone pushes you downstairs, mm-hmm. go up again. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. it's tough, but obviously, it, like you said, it's more rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, and I obviously wished he was up at the Gallagher, but unfortunately, he, he was up. But Ocean, you'll always but be remembered as yeah. as I a, remember, club, I actually a club, a club legend. Definitely, our club legend. I actually remember taking my GoPro to to Horsham and put it there, and I, I please film film this moment for me. I I will have it there. I remember you doing filming in the in the gym as well. Yeah. GoPro, you were doing training. That's awesome. you, were, you were filming the GoPro. I was just That's trying awesome. to motivate myself as well. Yeah. Like you have to, like you were saying, find your own motivation. Because like, like you're saying, like you get in the morning, you probably need a meet of wrap on my patella, but someone else has a, a wrap on the quad, and he's playing Saturday, so he's he's yeah, prioritizing yeah. Like you. Yeah. And then there's another one with hamstring, and I'm like, I can't really wait for mm-hmm. an hour to get two minutes treatment. Mm-hmm. At the end of the minute, it was two minutes, mm-hmm. so I just. Go to the gym and do it. There we go. There we but go. I think that's probably a great place to, to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I know that a lot of Maidstone fans... I've been will, asking. Will, yeah, what an episode it's been. I've really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Shout out to Ibs behind the camera as well. Yeah. Because yeah. Ibby, <laughs> no one good. of the cameras actually died halfway through and he went... <laughs> He doesn't speak the best English, do you? <laughs> Dead? <laughs> yeah, he actually doesn't know what you're saying right now. He's not saying about me. But hey, muchas gracias. Yeah, muy bien, muy bien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, <laughs> that's, so we uh, need to get a picture actually. Yeah, also, yeah, the the bin the behind the cameras. <laughs> yeah, so if yeah. you've heard maybe some rustling, that's just the bin bag that he's sitting on. So <laughs> yeah, but no, this has been an unbelievable episode. You know, so nice to actually like really meet you kind of for the first time, and I've heard so much about you, and it's it's so good to see how you've recovered from your injury. And I think we're all big AFC Totten supporters. Uh, so this yeah, and for our boy Monday. Perry as Perry, well. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah another, Perry. another former Maidstone player there. Scott Rendell used to be a Maidstone yeah, player. Yeah, Maidstone. Well. Yeah, we, we wish you all the best for the final, and hopefully when this comes out, you'll be uh, you'll be a champion. champion yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Come on, Perfect. Do you want to like and subscribe? Brother, come on. Come yeah, on. What, you want, brother? Guys, like, it's probably at the end of the video, though. People, people, people have clicked off. Yeah, right? literally. But all the support, thank you for everything. Yeah.